I started out hating my husband and my feet hurt. It all was worth it in the end. The pain we all seek right here. Show the buck, Eric. Am I gonna get sponsored now? <laughs> you missed a couple times. Like four. <laughs> I did it all in one room rock stalker. Nice job, buddy. Thanks. to the cliff. Let's walk in the cliff line. And uh, oh, right down here. And I could tell there's a lot more trails and stuff. And so I was just creeping along. I heard something. I heard a deer up. I think he was rubbing. He just rubbed. Yeah. And I said one went over the ridge with full belly. He came out bloody. Yeah. I could hear him rubbing. So I started creeping in. And uh, at this point I was like 20, probably 20 yards above the edge of the cliff. And uh, I'm creeping down to where I hear the noise. Look down and there's a three point. Like he's like wide, like a nice three point. Heavy. And he's just staring down over the edge of the cliff. Heavy. No, it's pretty spindly. I get to where I can kind of see him. And he's like, he just starts like walking up the hill kind of towards me where my opening's gonna be. And he stops. And he starts looking through the trees, couldn't see me. And then he turns around and starts walking down coming down this way and then I see another buck jump up and another buck jump up and they're taking off and th those were like nice four points big bucks and so they start coming I'm like trying taking a couple steps trying to take like get an angle where I can shoot and uh, just too much too thick I was 30 40 yards from them and then I saw there there's like a big open like shoot and so I got up and I ran around to get to the top of the chute where I could get an angle if they came across that and they never came across. And then I saw this buck go up over the top. Bloody one. Yeah. He came over in full velvet, out bloody. Yeah, every other buck in there was hard horn. <sighs> it's a good effort, I guess. So this guy pulled a little prank on the cameraman earlier. What'd you do? <laughs> so me and Tyler were still hunting this draw where I saw these three mature bucks go up and over. And uh, we're waiting there. They're 
hearing some stuff busting and kind of wait five, 10 minutes go by. Cameraman was sleeping on the job. He was just I was, screwing. I was eating, bro. Come on. <laughs> screwing around. So I hurry and knocked in there. I was like, get ready. He was scrambling, trying to figure out how to turn us. No, no, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm getting ready to drop my ready, ready. He's, he's looking, he's where, where? I'm like, just kidding, dude. <laughs> you got me so good on that one. You even earned a trophy. I you want to show him the trophy? What's that? The trophy? The trophy I gave you. What trophy did you give me? Oh, check your pack. Did you put something in my pack? <laughs> it should be right next to the sleeping bag. <laughs> a little lower. A little lower. What? You suck, dude. I am gonna kill you. I am gonna kill you. <laughs> Mystery stock. Mystery stock? Yeah, just a a ghost stock. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> Got ghosted. Um anyway I went on a stock just because it didn't come out, so I decided I would check in all those little ravines, you know? Uh -huh. And finally found them on that bottom shelf. All the bucks that were there. The big two point wasn't there and the big buck wasn't there. But if all if we would have stayed up high, we probably would have seen down gotcha. seen them. I know. But He's done the same thing for the last three days. Why wouldn't he do the same thing tonight? Right. Any stock we've seen, we I feel like we haven't even seen the animals or known where they're at. Mine, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're better. They're well. They're since they're rubbing, they're in thick timber. <sighs> it's tough. It's tough, man. Or we're still hunting. <laughs> oh yeah, we're still. <laughs> uh, this country's no joke, though. Man. Horse country, and we got two legs. Yeah. And heavy packs. I'm a spent. End of day five. Freaking getting our butts kicked. I'd like to stay longer, we only brought four days worth of food, and this is the end of day five, so it's uh. We're running on fumes. Time to go home. Don't want to, though. I mean, we've seen bucks, we've been in bucks, just hasn't been good opportunities, and we've tried to make the most out of them, still hunting, freaking. Going in blind because don't the only even know where they're bedding. We and we're going in after them. I'm glad we came. And tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow morning's the last stitch effort. I'm where I kill my deer tomorrow morning. I'm gonna light a fire, and I'm gonna eat as much as I can. <laughs> so number one, I can get full, and number two, I don't gotta pack it out. Yeah. I was talking to him. I said if we could eat down 15 pounds of meat, he's like 15 pounds of meat. He's like I could probably only eat two at one sitting. How many do you think you could eat? I don't know. Well, think about 20 ounce steak. That's a pretty big steak. <laughs> and that's only that's, that's a just pound over a pound. Yeah, that's just over a pound. Pound and a quarter. <laughs> last morning of the last day. Hoping Mr. Big cooperates. He's down there. We know where he's at. We know about what he does. Hopefully we can get into position. Wish us luck.
paid women to save our lives on any stock. Frank. Like, consistent win, please, in six days. I even stayed an extra day. I had him dead to rights, coming around this corner. I got into the middle of the draw and the wind switched. I felt it hit my neck. Now I gotta walk a mile on my bare feet on sharp rocks. We had them, they're in a good spot. Just couldn't get a good win. That's the way it goes. Bow hunting, but it's giving me in trouble with a rifle if I decide I still want this buck. This buck's in trouble. Big trouble. Ouch! I forgot my stalkers. Oh my god. Gosh, my feet are tenderized. Oh. All that pain was worth it, even though wind screwed us at the end. I had to, I, I didn't have a chance. Like he was gonna go in the trees. I didn't have time to make another loop once that one. I gotta go home, I'm a day late. And a dollar short. Buck short. Yeah, buck short and no freaking food. Ugh. It wasn't like I didn't put in the time. Man. Well, I mean, at least we can say we didn't freaking give up and didn't give it everything. Holy crap. We hiked all around this freaking mountain with the backpacks. All right, meet you by the pond. All right, later, dude. So, uh, just got back to the truck. End of a pretty cool adventure. Um, I've been looking forward to this hunt for a long time. Uh, long six day trip. Been in the high country chasing mealies with our bows and <laughs> in some of the best mealy country in the world. Right off the bat, before we even got up to, to camp actually, we saw one buck on, on uh, our side of the hill, you know, up in this high basin and he looked like a stud, but Eric, he scouted it and he had seen some bigger bucks up in this, the, the higher basin. So, so we decided to hold off and go up there. Um, went, set up camp, then went in glass and, and we saw a lot of bucks that night, but nothing, nothing big. All the big bucks had moved out for one reason or another. So, so I decided when we didn't see any bigger bucks up top, I was going to hunt that first buck that we saw that, that first day. And third day, we go do the same thing. Eric's hunting his buck and then I go and glass down and I, I see my buck and he's bed underneath this rock where I know I can get within 30 yards. And uh, so I head back down the hill. It's a, at least a mile and a half, if not two miles and a lot of elevation loss. Drop all the way down and around and I start making my stock in. Uh, and right before I start making my stock, this storm comes out of nowhere and it's just a nasty hailstorm and uh, winds blowing like crazy um, and then finally it subsided and, and I went up and made my stock got to where I wanted to be looked over the edge and he had moved about 200 yards into the center of the basin where he's untouchable and so that was the only real chance I had um, because that night or that at that same time there are two guys that came in one went to the other side of the basin and one came below and was like waving his hands and hat and trying to spook him towards uh, that escape route over there. And, and uh, the guy ended up shooting him, gut shot him, and I had to watch him run off with guts hanging out. And it was devastating because, you know, after watching that buck for three days at that point and really learning him and, and having a good plan, I knew that I was going to kill him. Uh, it was guaranteed. I just had to be patient and wait for him to bed where I could get to him. And, and anyways, they looked for him and they never found him. So it's a real bummer to see a, a incredible buck like that go to waste. 
Yeah, it's too uh, bad. That's the way it goes, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, not putting any blame on them, but really, it's just it's just a bummer when I know I could have, I could have done a little better. But. Honestly, my experience, I went in, found my buck first day. He was a sweet buck. Ty called him forklift because his beams just went way out. He's pretty cool because he had a four or five inch inline on his right side, I believe. And anyway, so that I had that in my head, that was gonna be my buck. And but I'd scouted this and I'd seen a lot bigger bucks. So I that's why I was kind of like, Ty, hold off, there's some big bucks in this basin, and we get in there and we don't find nothing but two points, and then my big buck, we called him my buck, but honestly, we just got our butts kicked and not show. I mean, we did everything we could. We put a lot of miles on. We were backpacked in, we were rationing our food, we were making, filtering our water, and making water trips. Uh, we went high, low, over the basin, down the basin, down the other side of the basin, down into some other basins. I spooked some deer out one time and then Ty and I still hunted them and he almost got a shot on them one day and almost spooked them into me and we're, I mean, we're, we're hunting bucks with bows like our grandparents and fathers used to hunt bucks with bows, pushing brush and, <laughs> we're just trying to do everything we could to turn up a buck and we just, it was a tough hunt. I kept telling Eric, you know, if, if we could just get the right buck in the right spot and it just never really happened. Mm -mm. I mean, it's, it's pretty much impossible to put a stock on a buck when he goes into that thick, that thick timber, you those thick right pines there. and... You can't glass you into them pines. No, you, you can't watch a bed, so. It's tough, it was a tough hunt. And there's, it's a little bit disappointing because I was expecting, you know, a, at least one good stock a day. And uh, it just didn't, didn't pan out like that, but uh, it's the way it goes. So, it was fun. It's fun, learned a lot. Yep. I finally had the balls to crawl out of my tent and face this winter wonderland head on. I stuck my jet boil in a thing of pine needles and twigs and I still couldn't get a fire started. I am, my feet are solid blocks of ice. I'm frozen, muddy. Wow, my beard's a disaster. And I am frozen. So, I'm gonna bell off, see if I can get a fire started lower and unthaw. If not, I'm gonna have to bell. Tyler's coming up with the horses and he has no idea what he's in for. You can't see crap. <sighs> Look at these things. Try lighting this stuff on fire. Especially as it's been rained on for four days. There's where I tried to start a fire. Here's where I slept in the Hilleberg. I need to find shelter. Let's start a fire. Golly. I feel like everything's too wet though. Mule deer problems. Little update. Finally got a fire started. Got my tent drying out, gun. It's amazing what a fire will do for you. Wow. And I got a little nice knee rest pad. Unthawed my water. Got my gloves unthawed. Tent. Exo lid. Well, I almost sent it, but I didn't. I just don't think the buck was big enough to shoot all the way in here. Gosh, if Tyler would have been up here, I probably would have shot one of those two bucks, but just not quite big enough for a hill like this. Man, all this snow. All right, we're back on the trail. This is my first trip back since archery season. Eric, he went in yesterday and he's been up there. He said it's been foggy the whole time. We only have this evening. From there, we got tomorrow and that's the last day of the season. So this is a Hail Mary trip. I decided to, felt like I was quitting if I didn't come back at least one more time. So we're back, Jess is with me and we're gonna kill two bucks and pack them out. Look who shows up when the weather's good.
when the weather's good. <laughs> Freaking, it's called planning, Eric. You wow. come when the weather's good. We have a guest. What's your name? Jess. Jess. Yeah. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's just get that stuff drying up a bit, eh? Nice. Get us a good fire. Well, what are we going to do tomorrow? Ty? Um, we're going to go kill two bucks and get that freak out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. Just Apparently, I don't know. You did all the scouting. Yeah. You tell me what we're doing. Yeah, we'll kill two bucks in the morning. You think? Haul them out. exact same spot where I saw him go in and he came out. Like I said, I had everything set up 400 yards. He was just feeding broadside, put it behind the shoulder and dropped him. He went down a little bit and laid down, kind of felt stumbled, fell down. He was laying there, so I shot him again. And then he just, he rolled all the way to the bottom. So freaking buck down, uh, nice buck. Anyways, Jess is gonna bring the horses down and I'm gonna try and get over there to him and see if I can make sure I know exactly where he's at. And if we can get horses to him, I bet we have to pack him up a little bit, but oh man, freaking pumped. Uh, freaking the Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor did, did the job. It was Hornady ELDX, freaking money. So uh, can't wait to go check him out and uh, see what he actually is. A big body deer. That is a big body deer, dude. The last day magic. That's what happens when you push to the end. Freaking, we are like eight and a half plus miles in here. And way off the backside, dropped down from where we camped. We were probably 1,500 feet down, maybe 2,000. It's stupid how much elevation we've lost. But that's how you kill box right there. Only good buck we saw. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, got down here, he rolled to the bottom and and uh, he was done. That's all she wrote, two shots, got two in him. He rolled all the way down. And, man, he is just a stud. Like, but me and Eric always said, we just want a big mature deer and that is exactly what this is. Like I had some opportunities, not really opportunities, but just uh, some deer that slipped through my fingers and. And uh, they, were, he was, they were bigger than this for sure, but uh, this is the last day we came back with rifles and just for a day and a half bonsai trip and, and we got her done. I couldn't, couldn't be happier. Um, we started glassing this morning and we spotted a few bucks over on this hillside and then we were just kind of hunting this other hill and Jess looks down there and he's like, dude, there's another buck down there. And I looked at my bind and I was like, man, that's a big body deer. And 
And uh, so we threw the spotter up and I saw what he was and I knew that he was good enough that I wanted to come down and take him and found a spot. Um, he went into the trees and bedded down. We found him bedded down in there and I just waited him out until he fed out. And uh, that's all she wrote. And uh, wow, I mean, talk about a mature deer. Like the, the face just is like white, sucker. white face. Um, big, heavy antler. I mean, I think he's recessed a little bit. His main beams are really short. I don't know if that was just how he was or, but just his backs are unbelievable. Like the mass, he's all bladed out and mass everywhere. Just crazy. Like I couldn't be happier with the last day buck like this. It's an unbelievable. He's definitely like a spike elk, so plenty of meat. And we're probably eight and a half miles. Straight, straight up. up that eight and a half miles back to the truck luckily we brought horses so we only have um about a quarter mile packed straight up this hill to get to the horses but quarter mile two thousand feet but a <laughs> lot of elevation so anyways just super happy with him and uh couldn't have asked for a better better ending to this this hopefully eric he's still hunting hopefully he's getting one so we're gonna get him cleaned up quartered out and get him up the hill and on the horses All right, so we uh, got back to our best friends here. Pokey's got the whole deer. Kino's got both of our packs. Not, it's not over yet. We got about seven miles to go and a thousand feet of elevation gain to get to camp. Load up camp and then we got 3,000 different. So it's not over, but it's gonna be a lot easier with these guys. Up we go. So I text Eric, he's like, where are you at? You guys okay? And I was like, well, we just got loaded up on the horses. We're heading up, head back to camp unless we have another deer to pack out. Where are you? He said, all he sent was, uh, we got another one to pack out. But that's typical Eric. He's gonna say that regardless. So <laughs> I told him, where are you? Don't freaking joke with me right now. Because <laughs> we want to get out of here. <laughs> Let's go find out. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. It's not too bad. We still got a lot of work to do because we got confirmation Eric did kill a buck. So we're taking the horses to the top and then uh, we're gonna hike down and help him pack it up to the top, we'll load everything on the horses and we're out of here. It'll be a late night. Cause it's what, six, what time is it? Freaking. I don't know dude. It is six o'clock. So we got an hour till dark and we got about five hours of work and a couple hours of freaking uh, hiking out. So whatever, that's what we signed up for. We knew it was gonna be like this, so. Giddy up. Giddy up. What would you do without good buddies to help you pack shit out? I don't know, but I got a heavy load here. I know that. <laughs> wow. Dude, that is a stud. Last day buck. Two last day bucks. Two last day bucks. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to part two of High Country of our Mule Deer Country series. We got an awesome giveaway going on right now. We have one of the best rests in the industry, uh, the Hamski Trinity Pro. So super easy to enter. All you gotta do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. If you wanna know your odds, just count how many comments there is. Should have a pretty good opportunity to win an awesome rest. Um, thanks for all your support. Again, subscribe, 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 leave a comment. Thanks guys. Hope you guys enjoy the film. If you don't, blame Chase. <laughs> <laughs>